To me, there's a big paradox. There's about 250,000 jobs in London financial markets, whether that be investment banks, investment management firms, hedge funds, rating agencies, exchanges, or the vendor community that services all those other industries. They've got demand for new talent, whether it be graduates or young professionals just say one or two years into their career. But a young professional, you know, how, how do you start? You know, where do you find all those opportunities? You know, what should you put on your application form? You know, how will the interview go? What will I be asked? You know, how do I sell myself? You know, that's, that's not easy, uh, whether you're a graduate or a couple of years in. But I'd say that you probably needed two things. You need a certain amount of financial market knowledge. You don't need to be an expert or a specialist, specialist in something, but you need to know a little bit across a broad array of subjects. So you need to know about the organizations that work in that sector. You need to know about the people that are in certain roles in that company. You need to know some of the terminology. You need to know something about the current issues of the day, whether that be China or US interest rates or what's going on with Volkswagen right now. And if you're interviewing with a company, clearly you need to know a lot about that company, which is much more than the company website. These are skills, really, that <clears throat> you might as well learn as early as possible in your career, because I would unashamedly say these are probably the most important skills you are going to learn throughout that career. <clears throat> You're going to have to use them time and time again. I mean, I know a number of you uh, are not graduates and just one or two years into your career, as we have the old hands up. So if you're searching for jobs like that, there is a complete, not paradox this time, but a complete mismatch. Because the way companies like to hire people is, first of all, they like to hire somebody internally, because that's a much safer bet. Then they like to hire somebody that's being recommended by somebody internally. Then they'd go out to some sort of trusted resource. Then maybe they get the human resource department to track people down with the right skills via social media on LinkedIn. Then they'd probably use some recruitment consultants. Then failing all that, they'd stick the job on the website. And then failing that, they'd just look at CVs that have been sent in to the company. Well, how do graduates and candidates you know, like to get hired? Well, they tend to send CVs into the company or look on the website and just send the CV in and hope it gets looked at. And a few of them might use a few recruitment consultants. But I know, I know very few graduates or young professionals who take the time and the trouble to make connections at companies and then use those connections to explore job and career opportunities at that firm and at other firms through that connection. So there is a mismatch between the way companies like to hire people and the way graduates and young professionals like to get hired. I was making a slight uh, career change uh, a number of years ago, and uh, what I decided to do was I, I thoroughly analyzed my skills and my interests, where I enjoyed certain aspects of certain roles in the past, and there's ways of doing that. <clears throat> I then spoke to a whole bunch of people in different sectors of the financial markets, and I said, who uses these skills and interests? And eventually, I was able to track down a particular role. And it was a marketing communications role within retail asset management. And through a friend, i.e. networking, I met an individual that worked in that sector. And he told me all the pros and the cons about the role and all sort of tips and advice that I later used at interview. I signed up for a retail asset management conference that was open to the public that was going on at a London exhibition center on a Saturday morning. So I got the train into town on my, on my day off, and uh, as I was walking through those conference doors, I was really uncom uncomfortable. I was really outside my comfort zone, having spent 20 years as a bond trader. I then went up to the seven leading stalls or exhibitors at the conference, and said, hey guys, I'm trying to get into this sector. I want this particular role if possible. Who shall I speak to at your company? And all of those seven guys, or seven groups of guys, were extremely helpful. And you will find them helpful in those sort of situations. And they all gave me a, a name and a telephone number and a contact at their company to speak to. 
So I contacted those seven companies. And it just so happened that one of those companies was looking for somebody just like me. And they felt they hadn't been able to advertise that position because they would have got a couple of hundred CVs and they didn't want to go through that and rounds and rounds of interviews. So the situation was one vacancy, one candidate, and that was me. And a time when it has all gone wrong before that, because I've made plenty of mistakes, and I think it is a common mistake also to make generally, is I, was make, I wanted to make a job change, and I went to a leading job recruitment site you know, for my sector. And on there, there was all these great jobs from leading companies that had my name written all over it. And I applied, and then I waited and waited, and not very much happened. All those jobs were either stale or non-existent. <clears throat> and even if they were real live jobs, the fact that I saw them meant that everybody else had saw them too. And so they still got two or three hundred sort of applications. So it wasn't a very smart tactic, and it's one that would have put people off for the future. I, I wouldn't recommend it. I just want to say one thing really about um, networking. Networking is really, I think, a word or an activity that I think people sort of shy away from a bit. And if I'm being honest, I think, you know, young guys like you and girls, I think it's sometimes you think that's what older people do. But networking is extremely important, particularly now most of you are beyond the initial graduate sort of intake sort of stage. Um, for example, I met up with a, uh, a young friend of mine a few weeks ago who six months earlier We'd worked together on her job search strategy, on her CV, covering letter, her interview skills. And I don't think she was the best candidate to get hired, but she got hired because she was just right up with her with all this technique. And we had a coffee catch-up. And during that, she told me about uh, an opening at her company. And they were looking for somebody just like her, but somebody who spoke German or Scandinavian languages. Well, I now know, obviously, that opening at that company. I also know of four other openings at that company. Anybody who connects with me, then I'm going to happily pass on that information to that company. And that company would be delighted, because that role is not advertised yet. And if they had to advertise, they'd pay a load of money in recruitment fees, and they've got to go through all that rigmarole, looking at a couple of hundred CVs and interviewing 20 candidates. So this is, this is kind of networking. So for your next job, it might come easily to you. But if you don't go that route, you know, who do you know out of your brothers and sisters, friends, from your friends, parents, from your parents' friends, from your LinkedIn contacts, from your university alumni, from your sports or whatever interest contacts? And you need to particularly if you're making some sort of slightly unusual change as well, you need to throw your net out there and connect with all these people and let them know what you're looking for. Almost so you've got 100 people on the ground for you. And it's not the question of reaching out to them and waiting for somebody to come back to you. You need to sort of stay in contact with these sort of people. Perhaps once every three weeks would be appropriate. I wouldn't do it by on the telephone, but just a short email. Uh, hi, Dave. Uh, it's Paul here. I hope the family is all well. Uh, just so you know, I'm still looking for my role in asset management. Having lots of interesting conversations right now. Hope to bump into you soon. So that when that person goes and have a meeting with somebody to do with asset management next week, or somebody you know suits somebody, your, your name will come into mind when that comes up. We're looking for a couple of people right now. When you connect with other people, their network essentially becomes your network. So. That was the inspiration behind uh, Opening City Doors, which started as a, uh, a blog and has grown exponentially uh, since then. And the idea was, is to open up the doors of the secrets of the London financial markets, or the city as we call it, um, to you guys. So a combination of financial market advice and career hunting advice. So this talk in any way shortcuts any pain in your own job or career search, then that would be a great thing. Thank you very much indeed.